Greetings! In today's Italian RTG, we finish off the champs that we started last episode with our new and improved Super Italian Squad, courtesy of packing Team of the Year Mbappe. Well, not really. We still didn't really spend pretty much the majority of the coins, and we could have afforded this team with or without him, with how prices collapsed and all our coins. But anyways, at this point in the weekend league, we were 6-0, and oh, I believe, and I actually switched to a 4-3-3. At a certain point, I didn't play all the games with 43, but I would start every game with it and we'll see how it goes. And if it goes well, I guess the next episode, I'll reveal the very simple setup that we have so far. But without further ado, let's get into the games. Will our luck continue? 6-0, we face George Best, Dino, which we faced a couple of times. And honestly, we just pick off where we left off with Zola being Zola. <laughs> Our 4-3-3, which I will be sharing very soon, if I can confirm after today's episode that it kind of does work, was really allowing the likes of Jorginho to get more involved. Oh, Jorginho! Go on, man. We would then wrap the game up really quickly. Interception, Chiesa finds Zola, and then you know what we do here. Ball roll, walk around the keeper, finish it, and it's on to game eight. And again, the 4-3-3 dragging out the defenses to the point that not only does Zola get involved and always fills up the nice pockets, but look at this. We drag out the defenses so much that even Darmian gets involved. Oh, I can sleep well tonight knowing that I scored that goal. Game, set, and match here to make it 3-0. As you can see, the defense, or sorry, the midfield is very up high. And honestly, that's uh, maybe one of the strengths slash downfalls of it. You need the midfield to press high because at a certain point, you're not really defending with three midfielders because your two CMs don't really help out. So it's more like a 4-1-5 than a 4-3-3, if that makes sense. Don't let Baggio and Zola distract you from that cheeky rebound that we got in the first uh, goal, but Operation Get a Nice Goal was well underway, and Zola allows us to do it. And eventually, in the 89th minute, after he turned on constant press to create the stalemate, we seal the game with a Baggio running through absolutely everyone. Now, at 9-0, could we get the 10-0, or was our luck all over? And it's Chiesa, baby. It's a big one. That's that's unreal. Like I don't know how that happens. I don't know how that happens. Like his right foot shoots that. His three star weak foot near post on Gijo. What is that? Nice kiss. Uh, let's go. Give me that rebound. Why can't I? Why can't good things happen to me? You know, like why? Why can't I score both my first two pens? I can't hold my lead. Like fuck me, man. Yeah, whatever, dude. Of course, now you go left. You fucker, man. How do you have four shots and three goals, man? Double his XG. Well, hopefully that would be our only 
hiccup and in game 11 with Socrates here we do get back on track with a lovely finish but it wouldn't take long for some issues to arise Zola or sorry bumper cars with Ginola leads to an unreal pass and finish from Socrates that was a nice you know mid height volley on the inside a little bit of a nutmeg here opens everything up for us and then we seal the deal with a dance dude Zola just dances a lot of cruise control games at this point here we see we're 11 and 1 and Zola breaks in and we really just make people tackle the air with that left stick in the box people just panicking my two center backs crashing at this point didn't really matter in the end despite the temporary draw because eventually Jorginho does what he does best intercepts the ball and honestly he does even a little bit more than that as you can see find the run here to seal the deal with Chiesa and we managed to do even more with a cross that I hadn't yet been able to pull off this entire FIFA Jeez! 12 and 1, we're facing a couple of team of the years, one honorary, one actual. And Zola, again, keeps finding himself in that central pocket of space. Been happening a lot more post patch. Then Jorginho shows that he's actually an offensive threat th sometimes. <sighs> Go on, Mr. George! We would then face the All-Stars with three icons, and this would potentially be the weirdest game all weekend. You'll see what I mean soon. Oh, bro, that pace from Chiesa. This might be a 4-2-3-1 game because he's just dancing with that guy. Let's go. That's a counter, man. Oh. Here we go, man. It begins, man. It begins. I can't. Like, at the very least, I should be scoring what I can, like, what I create, man. At the very least. Who moves this keeper, first and foremost? Like, wh what kind of a weirdo are you? And second, who moves him there, bro? Overhit ball. We're back, man. We're back to FIFA 21. Unbelievable. What is that? So he gives us the win, but at what cost? Maybe at the cost of three years of my life induced by the game that is FIFA 22, but yeah, I guess we'll take it. So game 15, despite the free win, it wouldn't be a cakewalk anymore at this stage, even with Kiesa turning into R9, uh, eventually his R9. Wow. Yes, please, thank you. This guy's game plan is working right now. He's just running around me. No, no, no. Like, I already knew it. As soon as Chiellini does that in animation, I've conceded. Like, what's the point? I thought they took that shit out. 
Didn't they th say that in the patch? No more animations where he tries to intercept but fails? At 3-3 three, three, though, Barella finds Baggio. He turns Insigne with a perfect movement in the pocket and he saves the day. So we are close to our target and then after that we can finally give the rest away. No idea how that shot goes through but that's an animation surely that we've never seen. I'll spare you guys the XG pain that was caused by the keeper movement of this guy but as fate would have it shortly in the extra time we get Zola to score and just as we thought we would throw it all away what ends up saving the day is not only Darmian's ferocious tackle but also wow I mean he did not lock on to that ball at all apologies to my opponents and now you might be wondering Stalin why are we 17 and 2 weren't you going to give away the wins and I was and I did so I was 16 and 1 gave one away was 16 and 2 and then all of a sudden I play someone who gave me the win before I could give it to him so while I'm 17 and 2 chat was like Stalin you gotta play for the 18 it's team of the year it's one more win I know you weren't gonna play anyways but now it's only one game and you get an extra ultimate pack so just do it and that's what I did which is why we're playing this game which we would seal off and it would give us the 18 and 2 so rank 2 and you'll see why that extra ultimate pack would be absolutely decisive for our road to glory because if you thought my luck was over after the team of the year Mbappe that I packed last episode before we started champs well then you got something else coming for you but trust me that this one this one was almost fate because not only was he a special player that we packed but we had something to show you about him can we even make coins from this team of the week am i expecting too much Nice little 82s, 81s. Big walkout. Casemiro. Cards like these. Oh, that's a very good pack. It's never Neymar. It can't be. I have something special to show you guys. Well, it's backwards, but you know what it you know what it reads. You know what it fucking reads. Welcome. Ani Garage in real life. <laughs> what the fuck is this pack as well? What the fuck is this pack as well, bro? And there you have it, boys. The luck not only continued, but even more. I, I dare I say it evolved because we packed the beautiful team of the year Jorginho so we could sell our own team of the year Jorginho and have our first owner one join the squad. He is one of our own now. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you next time.